In this clip, we'll learn what a rotoscope is and how to create a roto node. Okay, so a rotoscope is basically the same thing as a mask in After Effects. So in the past, rotoscope was a term used for animation and how you would draw right on top of a moving video. Now over time, that's kind of changed a little bit. You can still create a rotoscope that has a filled part of it, but most of the time, rotoscopes are actually just going to be, kind of have the functionality of masks where you're cutting something away um, or a part of your footage to make something look more integrated. So there's a lot of techniques nowadays for um, different things that can kind of automatically make these types of masks for you, but sometimes you just have to do it the old fashioned way. And in our case, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now you'll notice all we have left is kind of where we left off in our last module and we don't have our footage anymore. So I want to go ahead and hit the R key to bring in footage. And I want you to bring in this undistorted one. That's important because um, later on in the course, we're going to be actually undistorting the real footage once we get into some of the stuff about understanding the 3D space and the camera tracker and all of that. Um, but for now, use the undistorted footage as if, you know, we'd already done that part because I don't want you to create a rotoscope for footage that has not yet been distorted. So don't worry too much about the particulars of all that. Just pick this one. This is the one we'll be rotoscoping with for now. So go ahead and open that up and then let's go ahead and grab a merge and we're going to merge in this background as the B pipe with the A pipe of this merge over here. So now we should be getting our robot on top of everything and he's not pre-multiplied this way so we'll add a pre-mult node in between those two merges. And it looks like we're having a bit of an issue trying to get him to pre-multiply. So I suspect the issue is that we don't have the proper alpha channel. So let's take out that pre-mult and let's view this here. And when I hit the A key, sure enough, this is not the actual alpha channel. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to get to use our shuffle copy. So I'll add a shuffle copy node. Whoops, that's just a shuffle. And we'll hook our merge in here. Our two is the second thing we want, you remember that. And then we want our alpha to come from a new place. So I'll go ahead and we'll add another shuffle node. We'll shuffle Shuffle this alpha out from over here. And we'll just choose alpha right there. Name it alpha. And then our shuffle copy, we'll plug into the alpha. And let me just clear that out really quickly and reopen that. And now we should be getting our alpha. So. We're taking our RGB from this part of the merge and then we're taking the alpha from the original. And we're just using a shuffle to kind of keep it in line with everything else. But we could have grabbed it straight from the read node if we chose. Okay, so now let's try this. We'll merge that there. And perfect, now it looks like we intend. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our roto node. So the roto node is going to allow us to take away from this robot so we can make him look like he's actually standing in the cornfield um, or whatever kind of field this is. So normally you don't even really need to worry about the robot initially. You're just going to start adding the roto. So type in roto and it has this background pipe. So I'll just plug it right into my footage here. And to start creating the roto, 
most of the time you're going to start with this bezier here. Now cusp bezier just means that it doesn't have any handles so it's going to be hard lines and bezier is going to be kind of my maybe what you're more used to in After Effects with the pen tool and creating those types of uh, curves. So that's what I'll start with here. Now I don't really even need to look at the robot. What I'm really more focused on is the field itself and kind of where the robot's going to be sitting in that field. So if I come over here to my last frame, I'm kind of going to have him standing right in between this part of the field here and this part, kind of the same place where the girl is. So I want to roto out sort of this whole area here kind of over to where she is. So I would just start by clicking and I can left click and hold to start kind of pulling out those handles. Now I need to go back up, so I'm going to grab this handle, but you see when I do that, it moves the whole thing. So I actually need to hold down control, and then I can break that handle and pull it up. Now I can allow myself to kind of do that. Now you see I, I added a few more points there, and that's because I held down control while I was still holding down the original click. So you have to let go, then hold control to move it. Okay. And then you can just start going through. And again, that's kind of what happens there. So that's something that you can do in After Effects where you can hold it at the same time. In Nuke, you have to actually release it and then begin to draw. And that's not the worst of our problems. So that's okay. We can get used to that. So you're just going to continue down through here and draw all these nice little curves. And if you need to move one, just kind of come over here and you can grab it by the handle or by the middle. And you can really see a big definition in the difference of these these uh, plants, kind of where that line is drawn, because I get this really uh, different kind of color for the ones that are closer. You see how they're kind of more green and the farther away ones are this darker green. So we want to kind of just adjust here. And then here as well. And just so you're not having to watch me draw this whole thing, because it is rather complex, I'll just go ahead and kind of cap it off there. Now, normally you would want to keep going over here to, to where we would finish, but I've just got this one right there. So, with this rotoscope here, how do we actually implement this to start working with our robot? Um, and how do we then, you know, make it actually cut away from him? In between lessons, I'll go ahead and finish off the rest of this rotoscope, but we'll come back and I'll show you how to get it to work with the robot in the next clip.